Starting a story can be daunting, especially if you, like me, are aiming to write a fantasy story with a rich world, a vast and diverse cast, and an overarching plot spanning multiple novels. So that easily begs the question, where to even start? Now, stories have three very important building blocks that inform quite literally everything that happens. You could easily call it something like the trifecta of storytelling, which I will from now on do. Let's dive into a brief summary of what's what. The first element of the trifecta would be the setting, and it encompasses everything from the environment, the species in and the important landmarks and places of your world, its history, inner workings such as hierarchies and structures, heck, even the weather. It's a very broad category that you can pick and choose from what to develop and incorporate into your story according to your preferences and, well, the story itself. The second element is the characters. Compelling characters can be any kind of character if written out well, so don't break your head too much about creating a unique character when you first start out. Any character has three facets that make up who they are. Their current situation, usually including a want, a thing or idea they strive for, their backstory, which explains how they came to be and who they are today. And their future self, where is this character going to be at the end of the story? Now, the last and often most overlooked part of the trifecta would be the plot, the driving force behind everything that happens. There are a number of story structures that you can follow, like the hero's journey, save the cat, the three-act structure, or you can follow a more episodic narrative, subvert certain parts of the structure, or not follow one at all if you so fancy. Most plots tend to have a certain hook that could easily be summed up by the phrase what if. For example, in my story, the hook would be what if there was a realm where fairies were hunted upon by fairy hunters for their wings. Now, before I look into any of these three aspects in depth, it's important to know that any of these three elements informs and depends on the other two. Writing about the magic academy while none of your main characters have any magical abilities tends not to work out that well. Unless, of course, you're writing a comedy and that's your hook. But uh, hold up a second. These three aspects individually are already quite massive, let alone when you put them together. Where does one even get started? Now, the beauty of this is that you can get started practically anywhere along the trifecta, and no starting point is any better than the other two. My advice, if you're finding it difficult to get started, would be to pick the one you're most comfortable with and run with it. Perhaps you have a unique idea for a setting, like an underwater land where the houses are hidden underneath the sand. Or you can draw upon a setting that inspires you a lot, like say you know a lot about the Roman time period and decide to model your fantasy setting off of it. Then you can expand upon your setting and incorporate the other facets of the trifecta by asking yourself what kind of characters would live here, and what challenges could a setting pose for these characters. Or perhaps you have a great idea for a plot hook, like, what if there was a witch working in the potion industry, but one day her potions go awry, she blows up her shop and has to find a way to reopen it. From that hook, you can extrapolate the places she visits after her shop blows up and the kind of characters she'd meet along the way. You can ask yourself questions like, what does the potion industry look like? Which other characters could be in it? Are they helpful to her or an antagonistic force? And where do I want her to end up at the end of the story? What does she have to experience and who does she have to meet to get there? And then you can break it into smaller steps. Starting with, where does she go after her shop blows up? Then lastly, you could also start from the characters. I'm discussing this one last as it is probably the easiest one for most to start from, as a lot of people have some semblance of an original character laying around somewhere. Some even have an entire pantheon. You could start out with a group of characters, but you could just as easily start from a single character concept. Now, when you have a character or a bunch of characters, you could go either one of two ways. First way would be to figure out who the characters are at their core, and to extrapolate from there. You could ask yourself where the characters are currently situated, like are they students, children or adults? And if so, what's their occupation? You can dive into where they came from, what was growing up like for them. Did they live comfortably? or in constant turmoil, and how did the environment contribute to that? What elements of their backstory could you use to form a story? Do they have an inherent flaw they have to overcome? Or do they seek to get away from their current life? What are their hopes, dreams, fears, and how could you use those to craft a plot? Second way, you could figure out the antagonistic force. 
Now I say force because an antagonist doesn't always have to be a physical being. There's three types of antagonistic forces you could choose from. An external, internal or environmental antagonistic force. If you go the route of an external antagonistic force, you could go a number of different ways. As you can find an antagonist in the form of a villain, rifle, nemesis or overall just someone with an opposing view. To come up with such an antagonist, you could ask yourself questions like What are my main character's central traits and what type of character would directly oppose that? Or what are my character's goals and what type of character could be in the way of achieving that? Secondly, you've got the internal antagonistic force, which could range anywhere from a quirky personality trait taken so far it becomes a character flaw, to the inner demons your character might be struggling with as a result of either their backstory or the plot. Perhaps your character is struggling with anxiety, mourning the loss of a loved one, afraid of their own powers, you name it. But sometimes there's really not a physical antagonist to speak of, but rather circumstances creating tension in the story. In the case of our earlier example of the witch's shop, there's no direct need for an antagonist, as the central tension could just as well be the witch's struggles to get enough resources to reopen her shop. But there are also plenty of stories where the characters are opposed by the supernatural, environmental disasters, or in the case of an episodic or shorter narrative, a time loop malfunction, magical personality swap, or whatever you can come up with that will challenge your characters. In a lot of stories, you will find that the author doesn't limit themselves to one of these three antagonistic forces, but that they can peacefully coexist and enhance one another. Your main characters could end up desperately chasing an object their rival is after while they're in a tsunami, or perhaps the villain kills an important person in your main character's life and they struggle internally after that event. Now, this is great and all, but there's a lot to take in here and I don't want to leave you with a whole bunch of analysis paralysis. There's a chance you might already have one of the three picked. There's even a chance you've worked on a bit of all three of them already and are well on your way to writing your story. And if that's the case, this part of the video might not be for you. But considering the title of this video is how to start writing your fantasy story, I'm going to assume you clicked on this video because you are struggling to get started altogether, or because you have about a thousand notes, character sketches or Pinterest mood boards scattered around and you just can't seem to get started. If that is the case, I want you to take a pen and some paper, or open your notes or a document on your computer or whatever you currently have on hand. You can even take a mental note for all I care, if you really don't have anything within grasp. And pick one of the three elements. And don't give me that I don't have time for that right now or I'll do it later. If you have time to watch this video, you can do this too. If you are struggling to pick your element, I'm going to need you to reminisce for a second. If you think back to the beginning of the video where I first explained the trifecta, which of those three elements drew you in the most? Which part sparked an idea, got you excited or aligns with what you already have for your story? That is the one you pick. In order to understand the exercise I'm about to give you, allow me to explain the thought process behind it. And believe me, you'll have to bear with me for a little bit. Perhaps you, as an aspiring writer, have gone through a phase where you just poured your heart into a story about one of your favorite franchises. Perhaps you still do. But regardless, you likely are aware of the existence of those 200k word fanfics for which the probably 14 year old writer just never seemed to run out of anything to write for. A fanfic, in all fairness, is a great recipe for an author of any age to get their ground in, as it allows you to take an aspect of a story and really crank it up to 11. If you take the existing characters from a certain franchise and drop them in your very own setting, you basically have a free pass to go as ham with the world building as you can, because you don't have to worry about characterization. Or if you decide to throw the teenage character or characters you have thought up and basically say what would happen if they went to Hogwarts at the same time that Harry Potter did, you don't have to worry about the plot or the setting and you can zoom in on the characters as you explore how they would respond to certain events. I could go on but you likely have an idea of where I'm going by now, so here's where the exercise comes in. With the element of your choice, I want you to think about a way to explore that element on its own, kind of in the way you'd write a fanfic. It doesn't have to be a fanfic, you could invite your friends over to play Dungeons and Dragons in the world you craft, or you could write your first sloppy version of the plot using placeholder characters from various shows and books. Whatever works for you, but the idea is that you just start. And I'm not saying this just because it sounds nice, but because it's what worked for me. As some of you may know, my story started out as a roleplay between me and my friends set in the Wingslip universe. So we just had fun exploring the characters and throwing them into various situations to see what would happen and how they would respond. I documented it and that became the first draft of the story. What this did is that it gave me a baseline to work with and expand upon. 
Everything else followed organically, as I chose the storylines that worked best, the main plot started to take shape, some characters were scratched while others replaced their placeholders, I crafted backstories for the characters, and the world around them changed and grew. I think this just goes to illustrate that the elements of the trifecta play off of and influence each other. There's a likelihood the element you'll choose at first will give you ideas for the other two, and you'll bounce back and forth between them as you go along. But you have to take the plunge first and start somewhere, or you won't have anything to tweak and intertwine. However you do that doesn't really matter, as long as you simply begin. Keep living the magic, Chloe Joella Frostthorn.